Hello, my name is Ho Chal Nam. I'm first year master student at KAIST. Today, I'll present our work on the claim of weak block synchronization and Bitcoin. It's joint work with Sung Jin Baek, Yong Woo Oh from KAIST, Wo Yi Chun from National University of Singapore, and my advisor Min Seok Kang from KAIST. In many blockchains such as Bitcoin, when a miner discovers a new block, it propagates it to its other peer. Then, the peer propagates the block to other peers again and again, until it reaches all the nodes in the network. Fast block propagation is very critical in blockchain like Bitcoin, because Slow block propagation leads to the delayed reception of a new block. If miner experience delayed re block reception, eventually it can be translated to some loss of mining opportunity for a new block. Because they may waste their mining power seeking for a block with the same height as already mined. Worse yet, for similar reason, Slow block propagation can lead to safety violation. In Bitcoin, one new block is discovered about 10 minutes on average. With this 10 minute block time in Bitcoin, earlier work in 2018 shows that block propagation time should be less than 60 seconds in order to maintain Bitcoin's consistency. Most people believe that Bitcoin has fast enough block propagation until very recently. A couple of papers published in the last few years claim that Bitcoin's block propagation is much slower than 60 seconds. In 2019, one paper claimed that current Bitcoin has low data propagation. Furthermore, Two papers at CCS last year pointed out this slow block synchronization property in Bitcoin. And one of them exploits the slow block propagation and partition the Bitcoin network. They argue that weak block synchronization in the current Bitcoin increases the fork probability, wastes the effort of the miners, and lowers the cost of for the attack. By partitioning the network, the attacker forces to create two parallel blockchain networks, which are unable to exchange transactions with one another. When the chain becomes integrated after finishing the attack, a shorter chain will be discarded and all transactions in the shorter one will be invalidated. This type of attack can be potentially used to launch a double spending attack. The main claim from this recent paper can be summarized as follows. Bitcoin has the weak block synchronization problem, unfortunately. To be specific, they argued 60% of reachable nodes in Bitcoin network do not get a new block even after 10 minutes. Furthermore, they argued 40% of reachable nodes are behind more than six blocks. Interestingly, the claim of weak block synchronization is based on two totally independently conducted measurement studies by different group of researchers. One is BitNodes Monitor, one of the most popular Bitcoin monitors. The other is a supernode monitor that tries to connect all the reachable nodes in the network by using modified Bitcoin client. So, looks like there are two independent sources of information that support the weak block synchronization of Bitcoin. Does it sound scary? Because Bitcoin network is too poorly performing. Or, does it sound too unnear to you because it cannot be possibly be true? We were quite skeptical about this claim and there are some good reasons for our skepticism. First, 
There is an earlier report about block propagation speed in 2013, which shows that block propagation used to take only 10 seconds in 2013. Second, compact block technique was introduced to Bitcoin in 2016, and this further improved the block propagation speed. Last, we thought that considering the Bitcoin ecosystem, if Bitcoin were really that slow, Bitcoin miner would have complained about it already. But we haven't heard any such complaints yet. To that end, we decided to conduct our own measurements on Bitcoin's block propagation. So our goals in our own measurement studies are to reevaluate the claims of weak block synchronization. We argue this is wrong. Second, we investigate some measurement error found in previous work and find some root causes of these measurement errors. Finally, to present more accurate block propagation performance in Bitcoin. To sum up in advance, Bitcoin is in fact fast enough. Before we start, we quickly check the correctness of those two Bitcoin monitors. We first build five Bitcoin nodes on AWS in different geographic region, and run Bitcoin full nodes to get the ground truth block update time of these nodes. Then we compare with measurement data in bin nodes and super node monitors. Ideally, the time gap between our ground truth data and the measured block reception time in the two monitors should be zero. And thus, CDF plot should look like this straight line. However, in our simple test, the super node monitor tends to be slower than the ground truth data, sometimes a few minutes. Worse, Bin node monitor is consistently slower than the ground truth about a few minutes, almost always. From this, we now have clear evidence that something must have gone wrong with this two Bitcoin monitor. To figure out the problem, we examine these two independent measurements. Then, let's start with the bin node monitor. Binnodes monitor uses a polling-based mechanism to keep the complexity of its monitor low. That is, the monitor actively initiates a handshake with each peer node and get a version message from it. From the version message, the monitor gets information like user agent at block height appear. Binnodes monitor takes the snapshot of entire peers in about every 4 minutes. This polling-based measurement is one clear source of measurement errors. Let me use a simple animation example to explain this. Here, we have our nodes in the US East region in AWS and Binnodes snapshot. Binnodes has 4 minute cycle for take snapshot and Binnodes try handshake in each cycle. The problem is that Bitcoin block mining time and timing that peer response version message are also unpredictable. Some blocks are discovered quickly after a previous block and it causes to miss the update cycle for the latest block height update. As a result, Measurement delay is increased for the new block. In some extreme cases, when a node receives a new block right after sending a version message, it has to wait for next cycle to update its new block height, which can up to 8 minutes of delay. In addition, we found few bugs at, that are not shown in this figure. For some reason that we do not understand for now, in the most of BitNode snapshot, 15% of nodes are reporting the zero height, which means 
they only have genesis block. In case of tor node, 80% of tor node report their block height as 0. Then, let's move to the super node monitor. A super node monitor is a modified Bitcoin Core client that can connect as many peers as possible. Block highs are updated whenever peers send messages like inventory, header, compact block, or block. Then, what is the mistake in Supernode Monitor in recent works? We found that Supernode Monitor makes a subtle but very critical mistake. The Supernode Monitor first gets block data from some of its peers. Then, the monitor just like other Bitcoin nodes, relay this block data to its other peers. Then, this is mistake. Why? Because peer that get block data from the supernode monitor never send any messages about this block back to the supernode monitor. Because this node think that the supernode monitor already has this block. In short, the block propagation at the monitor ends up contaminating the monitor peer state severely. So, we fixed this problem with the supernode monitor by disabling all block information propagation at the monitor. We run the unfixed and fixed monitor for 24 hours and compare the result. Both monitors have connected to about 9k peers. In our experiment, we monitor how many nodes out of 9k peers have received a new block after 10 minutes. The unfixed monitor says that many peers still haven't received the new block information. However, the fixed monitor says that the vast majority of peers have received the new block. We also measured what really happened immediately after a new block is mined in the network. In other words, how fast a new block propagates through the network. On average, a new block reaches to the 90% of reachable nodes in less than 4 seconds. Yes, the block propagation in Bitcoin is fast enough. To double check our result of fast block propagation, we measured block traveling time in reg test network. First, we deploy 11 Bitcoin core nodes to all ar around of world. And then, we build a 10 hop size overlay line topology network that goes around the earth by connecting these nodes. Then we generate a block at the start of this line topology and we measure the block traveling time. In this experiment, we confirm that block propagation time never exceeds 10 seconds regardless of block data size. As we are reviewing other Bitcoin measurement studies and conducting our own measurement, we notice that all existing Bitcoin measurement tools have a common problem, and we argue that we need a better measurement for Bitcoin. First, operating super nodes always involve some ethical issues because they occupy many connection slots in all Bitcoin full nodes for measurements. It eventually consumes the connectivity resource of Bitcoin P2P network. The problem is that this is done without any consent from Bitcoin nodes. Another big problem is the observer's effects. If a researcher operates some supernode monitors, they end up degrading the connectivity of the entire blockchain network. And this potentially contaminates the measurement result because it eventually measures the degraded Bitcoin network. 
For this reason, we argue that we need a better measurement method for blockchain networks. Which means we need a better measurement without ethical issues and privacy concerns. In addition, we also need a way to measure bit blockchain network without observer effects. Here's our takeaway. First, we realize that precise measurement is very tricky business in blockchains. We found that two independent studies have made mistake in measurement measuring Bitcoin block propagation. Second, fortunately, Bitcoin is fast enough. In our measurement, it takes less than 4 seconds for a new block to reach more than 90% of nodes, which is quite comforting news. Finally, we argue that we might really need a better way of measuring performance of blockchain network, and we'll leave it for our future works. For that, I'll conclude my presentation. Thank you for listening. If you have any question or comment, please contact me. Thanks.